Hey Salt Strong, this is Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina and real quickly I wanted to talk about venting and descending fish and barotrauma as a whole. Right now we are on the doorstep. Today is the opening day of Private Recreational Red Snapper. That runs from today, June 11th, all the way through July 25th. So we're excited about this recreational private red snapper season here in the state of Florida. But across all five Gulf states, there's private recreational red snapper seasons opening up. And this applies to the entire Gulf of Mexico and even over on the Atlantic east coast of Florida. It's so important for all of us when we're heading offshore fishing to make sure that you're taking care of the fish. What drives me crazy, makes me super upset is to see someone holding the photo or holding the big red snapper up in a photo and behind them you see 10, 15, 20 dead floating fish on the surface. That's crap. And hopefully it makes you as upset as it makes me. Inshore, we're all so careful to coddle our snook and support their bellies and make sure our hands are wet before we hold that trout. And people even go so far as to hold their breath to make sure their trout's not out of the water too long. Those same people will go offshore and let 10 fish float away from their boat dead. And I don't get the disconnect. So real quickly, we wanna go over how you can make sure when you go offshore that you're being as good as you are inshore too. Because we all care about this fishery. We all want the most access possible to the most amount of fishing days to go catch these fish and harvest them. That's key. However, when you go out there and you're harvesting two red snapper or one red snapper, depending on East Coast or Gulf, uh, when you harvest those fish, a lot of times you have to let some fish go. Either you filled your bag limit or when the season's not open, you gotta let them go or when they're too small, you gotta let them go. And those fish go floating off. Those fish count towards our quota. They are taken out of our quota and our seasons get shorter based on what's called discard mortality. And we can help, you can help, to spread education and awareness to lower discard mortality. And the way you do that is really easy. All you have to do is vent or descend your fish. Now, descending, descending devices are easiest to use. If you're watching this video like, hey, what's barrel trauma? I don't fish offshore a lot get a descending device. It's easiest to use, super simple. You hook the fish up, you send him down, he's good to go, he's gonna live another day. A venting tool is a lot more tricky. It takes more of an experienced hand and an experienced anglers to properly vent a fish. Cause you gotta know where to place it and you gotta make sure that you don't go too deeply. So we'll cover both. Descending devices, you can purchase them. They range in price anywhere from five, 10, $15 up to a really nice fancy one like a sequelizer for 65, 70, 80 bucks, depending on what model you get. Sequelizers are definitely the high end, really nice ones, super easy to use, but you can get it something like an inverted hook or you could take an old milk crate and stash some uh, lead weight onto the outer rim of it and turn that into a descending device. So you can make your own descending device. You can buy a fancy one. There's tons of options out there. And if you check out the links in the body of this post, you'll find more information about the Fishing for Our Future site that the Gulf of Mexico Fishery Management Council put out. You could just Google Fishing for Our Future Gulf Council and you'll find that website. There's a ton of videos based on what state you're in uh, that gives you tons of information on descending devices, venting, uh, and more. So definitely check out Fishing for Our Future. They'll teach you more about how to use all the different brands of descending devices. Now, venting is really easy. You take a device, make sure that you hit the fish in the right spot, which is right underneath the pectoral fin towards the base of that pectoral fin. And you put that venting tool in there just about maybe a quarter inch down. You wanna make sure you don't poke the fish or stab the fish too deeply. And that's the biggest mistake I see. Most venting tools have a needle on them that are two, three inch long. You don't need to go into the fish, but maybe a quarter inch. So you've got to be careful. I use my thumb and forefinger as a guide to make sure I don't stick that needle or venting tool too far into the fish. Because the whole idea is you're not trying to pierce any organs. You're just trying to release the pressure. Barotrauma. 
is what is causing the need for descending devices or venting tools. And barotrauma can occur at any depth out there beyond around 70 to 90 foot in the warmer weather months. And then in the cooler months, around 90 to about 110 foot is when we run into barotrauma. And you'll know when the fish has barotrauma because a lot of times he's gonna have his swim bladder or stomach extending out of his mouth or his scales are gonna be poked out or he's gonna be all blowed up from pressure. What it is is when you reel a fish up from the bottom quickly, his gas inside his body will expand and it can't escape. So you have to let that gas escape with a venting tool or you take a descending device and send that fish down on a weighted device to let him recompress naturally. Those are the two options to mitigate barotrauma and discard mortality is a venting tool or descending device. And that is what barotrauma is, is it's simply just to build up a gas. What I like to do is on my first fishing spot, to find out if I need to vent or descend, I'll throw the first fish in uh, into the water close to the boat. If it floats away and it can't get down, I know for the rest of the day, every fish that I release must be vented or descended. But if you're fishing 20, 30 foot of water and you throw your first fish in the water and he swims right to the bottom, super healthy, you know you don't have to vent or descend your fish at that fishing depth all day long so use that rule of thumb your first spot toss one in close to the boat so you can retrieve it if it can't get down and then you know the rest of the day you have to vent or descend or if you can swim down healthy you know you don't have to vent or uh, descend the rest of the day so make sure you spread awareness make sure everybody who you're going out fishing with knows they have to vent or descend a fish don't let fish go floating away from your boat. It's a waste of the resource. It's a waste of our fishery and it's pathetic. It's, it's sad to see. So don't let it happen. If it does happen, use it as a teachable moment to train and educate that angler on how to be a better angler, to take care of our resource, give us more access, and slowly we're gonna lower these discard mortalities and have longer fishing seasons. Remember, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too busy. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure you get a venting tool or descending device before your next offshore adventure and enjoy this short red snapper season. Hopefully everybody gets plenty of them out there. Tight lines.